I want the truth and nothing but the truth. What's up everyone, it's your lawyer, Jabber Godot, and today we're going to be going over a heavily requested like what if on the channel, what if Kakuin lived and Polnareff died. Before I go any further, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe with notifications on. It really helps out the channel a lot, as well as follow my Twitter because I'm pretty active on there. Alright, on to the video. So to set this up, we're going to start with Kakuin. When Dio stops time at the clock tower, Kakyoin is just going to be non-fatally wounded in this what if by Dio, but he's still taken out of the fight completely after getting his message out to Joseph before passing out. Everything from then on goes just as normal until Polnareff comes back to stab Dio in the head. Dio then stops time, and a deviation from the regular turn of events, Dio decides to kill Polnareff instead of just sending him flying. Of course, this makes Jotaro squirm with fury, but he does his best to play dead. After that, the rest of the events of Part 3 go like normal except that Polnareff is the one who dies, not Kakyoin. After Dio's defeat and bathe in the sunset, Jotaro and Kakyoin together do some more investigating in Egypt over anything tied to Dio. Jotaro finds Dio's uh, heaven plan journal and reads it. Kakyoin finds a stand arrow in Egypt. After that, you know, Jotaro and Kakyoin begin like tracking excavated stand arrows which later leads uh, Jotaro to discover or have a hunch about a stand arrow in Morio slash Japan that he'll go and visit later on. Meanwhile, Kakyoin would discover that a man took an arrow and went to Europe, specifically Italy, but instead of going there, Kakyoin just opts to tag along with Jotaro throughout the years instead, reason being that their chances of beating and surviving against any enemy stand users are far better if they just stick together rather than like separate because like they don't know like what kind of like terrifying stand abilities are just out there especially if they could compete with time stop which leads into Kakyoin being in part 4 with Jotaro honestly the part doesn't change too much as Kakyoin is going to be playing the best support role in the part due to his experience in part 3 I could just imagine Kakyoin just being the guy to come in clutch in most stand fights in part 4, not only showing off his experience but intelligence. For example, instead of it just being Jotaro and Koichi going to like the tailor to investigate Kira's button, Kakuin could tag along too, maybe figure some stuff out before Jotaro could too. And the events could play out similarly where Jotaro and like Kakuin, you know, almost being killed by sheer heart attack because of them, you know, saving Koichi. Everything plays out like normal, and we're at the point where Kira is about to turn Koichi into a bomb. Only instead of you know Jotaro coming to the rescue, it's Kakyoin, with a Hierophant Green Strand restraining Killer Queen's hand as he was about to turn Koichi into a bomb. What was running through Kakyoin's like mind in that moment is that he will not just be unconscious and useless as another one of his comrades die, referencing Polnareff in this instance, of course. Kira is shocked that Kakyoin is still alive with injuries that look fatal. Even seeing Kakyoin stand like fade in and out of existence as Kakyoin is close to dying pushing himself like this, Kira regains his composure and, you know, just talks down on Kakyoin, then mentions that by Kakyoin's, like, you know, stand grabbing Killer Queen's hand, now he's the bomb instead of Koichi, and Killer Queen easily breaks Hierophant like Green Strand before, like, rubbing it in that Kakyoin right now is way too slow to stop Killer Queen from blowing him up. Kill the Queen does the motion to blow up Kakyoin until being promptly interrupted by Jotaro, aka our regularly scheduled programming. Kira gets his ass beat by Jotaro. Jotaro before you know falling unconscious states that he's like very thankful for Kakyoin and also very proud of Koichi as he heard and caught glimpses, like small glimpses of what Koichi was doing, saying and how he's developing throughout the entire situation, just like normal. Anyways, everything in part 4 plays out like normal, with Kakyoin probably being the most liked stand user in Moria as everyone gets along with him pretty well, even like going to Kakyoin just to seek advice, or just life advice, right, or stand advice. Especially Josuke since him and Kakyoin can strongly relate in an area that being like a stand user when they were like so young up like to like, you know, high school just isolated them from, you know, regular people. The only other stand fight I can imagine Kakyoin taking part in would be Superfly. Like, we just replaced the alien dude with Kakyoin. Kakyoin having, like, Hierophant Green, you know, Emerald Splash, spraying the guy inside the tower, making sure he doesn't escape so that Josuke can escape. I, I, I don't know, I just can imagine that being a pretty fun fight. If just, you know, we replaced the alien dude with Kakyoin, right? Now, on to part 5. This is gonna get crazy. 
Jotaro still can't go to Italy because he's super busy with life memes of Morio. So Kakyoin would, you know, go instead on Jotaro's behalf, preparing for anything to happen because they know there's like stand users in Europe, along with like a stand arrow. And from their communications with some Speedwagon Foundation members, the crime rate has shot up to insane degrees. Their theory is that it's most likely because of a, you know, just a gang of stand users, right? Before, you know, going to Italy, while Jotaro and Kakyoin are having a conversation about like just certain contingencies on if the worst were to happen while Kakyoin is just in Italy, a stand arrow that was in a glass case on Jotaro's wall coincidentally falls down a tight space behind a large heavy cabinet. Jotaro and Kakyoin take notice. Kakyoin says, you'll get it. Then Kakyoin uses Hierophant Green to, you know, get the arrow as that'd be like the easiest way. Suddenly, Hierophant Green's finger gets nicked by the arrow as Jotaro would even see it when Hierophant Green brings the arrow into view. Honestly, a happy accident, right? That shouldn't be given, like, not, you know, just that much thought, right? Wrong. Mirroring Ponorif's discovery in Part 5, both Jotaro and Kakyoin are blinded when Hierophant Green starts glowing bright, changing. In that process, Kakyoin's mind is flooded with one of his deepest desires ever since he fought Dio in Part 3 to know any stand user's exact abilities, every detail. And in that conversation about Italy, he caught glimpses of different stand abilities, well, in Italy. The final one being the most terrifying of all. Not only being able to see the faded future for 10 seconds, but being able to erase time. But that vision would be interrupted as Kakyoin would snap out of it and realize that Jotaro along with everyone in Morio is unconscious, like their souls have been ripped out of their bodies. Kakyoin would quickly take the arrow from this soon-to-be Hierophant Green Requiem, and everything went back to normal. Kakyoin tells Jotaro about his discovery and what he saw. Jotaro then changes his mind and opts to go to Italy himself, believing the threat of something having the ability to something or someone having the ability to see the future while erasing time to be just seriously just a real threat that must be investigated by Jotaro himself immediately. This leaves Kakyoin and the Speedwagon Foundation to run some tests on the arrow to figure it out. Along with, you know, Rohan coming by sometime for manga inspiration or whatever. Jotaro goes to Italy running into Giorno, the man he was looking for, but of course Giorno gets away like he did with Koichi. Jotaro not, you know, getting a good look at, you know, Giorno's abilities, but he can get the basic idea that he can create life. Jotaro would then run into Giorno again, helping him against Black Sabbath pretty easily. Jotaro would tell Giorno everything about his father in exchange for certain information. Jotaro spills. Jotaro doesn't know what to think about his father, but he's still chill with Jotaro because he knows he's a good dude. And it's a shame that Jotaro's own real father was evil, but like with how he's just lived up till now, he's not surprised. So Jotaro asks about a stand user with the ability to see the future and erase time in Italy. Jotaro knows nothing, but the only hunch he could give is that maybe the stand user is just in Passione and could most likely be the boss as like those just those abilities are seem pretty strong and it would just make sense just if the boss had it because it also makes sense how he just stayed up top for so long. So Jotaro would give Jorno a tracker that he turned into a ladybug. Jotaro telling Jorno to activate the tracker when he's found the boss as the boss is the best bet to find the time manipulating stand user if the boss isn't already him. Meanwhile, Jotaro would be cautiously investigating Italy, heeding to Jorno's warning about Passione having absolute control over everything. Jotaro not trying to bring any attention to himself. Part 5 goes like normal until Bruno, like the main timeline, gets his final orders from the boss. Bring Trish to him on a small island. Bruno fights Diablo. Bruno escapes while King Crimson looks up in anger, only to be immediately annihilated by an attack. No, multiple attacks that just happened instantly. Almost like someone stopped time. Diablo would sink deep into unconsciousness while hearing a man say, Good grief. Jotaro would take Diablo's body upstairs and reunite with Giorno with everyone else, even Bruno being confused as to who this man in all white is, carrying a pink haired dude that they soon like no is the boss. Jorno explains everything as well as Jotaro. Bruno becomes the new boss of Passione before later dying because of his, you know, decaying body because he, he did die to Diablo, right? 
and passing the mantle of boss, you know, just being the boss, over to Giorno. Jotaro takes Diablo into custody of the Speed Black and Foundation with tight security where he'll never like hurt or kill anyone again, even having Rohan right in him, quote, I will no longer use my stand or any of my stand abilities into Diablo. Man, Rohan's just being the goat. Anyways, finally, part six rolls around, going mostly the same. Kakyoin would appear when Jolene breaks out of prison and would help Jolene and friends throughout their fights to, you know, defeat Father Pucci. Something to keep in mind is that Kakyoin brought an insurance policy in case things go wrong, given how serious the whole situation is with Jotaro, like, out of the fight for a bit, like, without his stand or memories. Everything goes like normal until the Maiden Heaven arc, where Kakyoin would use the 20 meter emerald splash to keep Pucci at bay from the gang while Kakyoin sneaks the insurance policy to Emporio as it's within like Emporio's shirt on his back that no one can visually see. Kakyoin would die to Pucci unfortunately, along with Anisui, Jotaro and everyone else just like the canon timeline. And instead of a disc being pushed into you know Emporio's head, Kakyoin's insurance policy aka the stand arrow would pierce Emporio giving Emporio a Requiem version of his stand, burning down the house that initially had the power to bring about ghost objects, but now with the ability to dominate all souls, Emporio passively brings his friends back to life with their stands from the previous universe, their souls, you know, come over, right? As well as Pucci being unable to bring out his stand, Pucci gets his ass beat by everyone, dies, Emporio gives his final goodbye to everyone as his Requiem like, just slowly fades away along with the arrow and the previous universe then emporia is placed in the new universe just like the original canon like the timeline and everything else just remains the same that's pretty much all i have for this what if and how i imagine things going i maybe got a little head candy here and there but hey it is what it is i hope you all enjoyed this what if regardless anyways that's all i got i'll see y'all later peace <laughs>